So a long, long time ago, way back before most current North Star members were born, I was invited to come out to Western Massachusetts to see the new center, new program that Josh Hornick and Ken Danford had started the previous September. I was living in the Boston area at the time and editing a magazine called Growing Without Schooling, which had been founded by the radical education critic John Holt a couple of decades before that. So really the early, early history of this movement. And when I came to Amherst, I was, I think you could say a curious skeptic but I wasn't skeptical the way so many people are. I wasn't skeptical about the capacity of young people to learn without schooling. I was skeptical about whether this thing that Josh and Ken had created was really going to be an alternative to school and not just another alternative school. And I wondered whether the design and the structure of this new thing was gonna be one of a kind or something that could be replicated by others who wanted to make the same opportunities available to young people in other parts of the world. Because the idea of replicability had been a key part of John Holt's vision. And actually one of the many reasons that John Holt had ultimately turned his attention to growing without schooling, rather than alternative schools, was because he actually thought that that approach was more replicable that it was actually easier to take kids out of school or never go to school in the first place than to go through all the trouble and, the, and sort of bureaucratic complexity of starting and maintaining a school. That to grow without schooling, one family could do it, and then another, and another, and another, and so the movement would grow. And then in 1991, when Grace Llewellyn first published her book, The Teenage Liberation Handbook, that essentially marked the beginning of the growth in young people, teenagers themselves, taking the initiative to leave school and take charge of their own learning. And there again, it worked the same way. One teenager could do it, and then another, and another, and another. The idea was replicable because each individual and each family could find a way to grab hold of it and make it work in their own lives. But it's true there were still a lot of obstacles, or at least perceived obstacles, to families or teenagers making this choice. And a lot of it had to do with whether the path actually really truly felt possible or doable, and whether there would be a community of support when you took the chance and changed everything, and even something as practical as whether there could be for young people a welcoming, safe place you could go during the day that wasn't home and wasn't school either. And so this is where North Star then, as you know, called Pathfinder came in at a really crucial time in the movement's growth, making growing without schooling possible for all kinds of families who later said, just plain said, that they would never have chosen it otherwise. So of course all of this was really exciting to me when I came out to visit in the spring of 1997. But again, I wanted to figure out whether what Josh and Ken were doing could be replicated by anyone else. Because if, if the answer was no, it would be a great thing they were doing, but it wouldn't necessarily mean much for the education as a whole. It would serve some people, but not potentially everyone. And by the end of my visit that day, I had concluded that yes, this could be replicated. It would be tough. I knew, maybe, figured, for others to have that, just that right combination of experience and skill and understanding and real leadership in, in that sense <laughs> that you saw in the film, you know, in the sense of being willing to take a risk and try something new. But for me, the key thing was that it seemed in its design and structure and sort of basic underlying principles that the model could be replicated. And in that capacity lay some of the most exciting potential in education at that time. So as you know, it took several years for North Star to build and develop its own program before the organization could really turn focus to replication. But I think the capacity 
as I say, and the vision for replication was always there from the beginning. And I'm going to go so far as to say that I think in some ways we all felt that the real potential, the real success even of North Star wouldn't be fully achieved until we could see its capacity for replication put into practice, until others really did get the essence of what North Star was doing and figure out how to make that happen in their own communities. Joel Hammond and his colleagues at the Princeton Learning Cooperative were the first to take that possibility and make it real. And so we celebrate replication today by celebrating now the Princeton Learning Cooperative's courage, spirit, and tenacity. They've really gotten the mix right. Understanding the North Star model so deeply and fully that they're true colleagues with North Star in the effort to make living and learning without school a real option for young people. But Princeton Learning Cooperative is also independent and self-directed enough that they've made this vision their own. And they're not just parroting someone else's words or ideas you know, without thought. So for all of these reasons, we are celebrating the Princeton Learning Cooperative with our self-directed learning award today. So I'd like to call up Joel Hammond, the co-founder and co-director, to accept the award on behalf of the Princeton Learning Cooperative. And it's, it says, <laughs> North Star, Self-Directed Learning for Teens, 10th Annual Self-Directed Learning Award presented to Princeton Learning Cooperative for exemplifying the idea that learning is natural and school is optional.